Hi there, this is Caitlin Margaret and welcome back to Radiant Wholeness. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cultivate deep and meaningful relationships with new amazing people. Because as you grow and transform as a person, you need to build relationships with new people who are in greater alignment with the person that you seek to become. And while many people have this limiting belief that it's hard to make new friends when you get older, I'm actually going to make it easy for you in this video and show you the five foolproof strategies I use to cultivate deep, authentic, and really meaningful relationships no matter how old you are or what phase of life that you're in. As always, before we get started, make sure you hit the bell and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a thing. Welcome to Radiant Wholeness, the soulful sanctuary for big-hearted, high achievers longing to cultivate more joy, fulfillment, and inner peace. I'm your host, Caitlin Margaret, and I'm an expert at helping high achievers create the life their soul is longing for. I'm a published author and a master life coach, and I'm all about creating massive social impact while loving yourself, speaking your truth, and connecting with the divine on the inside. Now let's dive in. Make sure you stay until the end of this video because I have a very special opportunity to share with you. And it's one that's really gonna help you practice the skills that I'm gonna teach you today so that you can cultivate a real soulful community and bring more intimate connection and joy into your life. Also, if you haven't already seen it, please go back and watch part one of this video because that's where I show you how to find and connect with the kind of people that will really honor and celebrate your authentic self and the person that you're becoming. So you can find that link below in the description. Now, once you've found the right kind of people to connect with, then the next step is to start building those deep and meaningful relationships with them. And that's what we're here to speak about today. So here are five foolproof strategies that you can use to nourish that profound connection you seek with other people. Strategy number one, create shared experiences. So people, when they meet new people that they kind of want to be friends with, they tend to play a really passive role. Like they'll just wait for that friendship to naturally evolve. And sometimes that works, but with this busy world that we live in, a lot of times it doesn't. So you need to take initiative to create shared experiences. Maybe you could buy two tickets to a show or an event and tell another person that you've got an extra ticket and ask if they might want to join you for your treat. You could also do this for an online event if you're in the midst of the pandemic. And then after the event, you could meet up for a conversation about that event and how it affected you. Another option, for example, for creating shared experiences is asking for an accountability partner. So if you find out that you share an interest with somebody, maybe around new recipes or reading a certain book or getting a certain kind of exercise regularly or any shared interest, you can actually ask that person who you want to create the relationship with if they'd like to create an accountability system with you. So for me, one thing that that looked like this year was there was this book that I really wanted to read and another person I know really wanted to read. Um, and so I asked her, how about we create a book, book club around that? And so what we would do is during the week, separately on our own time, we'd kind of read the chapter and do some of the exercises in the book and do some of the practices that were shared. And then we'd come together once a week for about an hour and just talk about our experiences with that. And we really, really got to know each other in a deep way around this shared passion of ours. And what was interesting is once we kind of trusted each other in that space, in that kind of shared passion, we started branching out to create accountability systems in many other areas of our lives. So no matter what it is, whether you're inviting someone to an experience or to an event or just something that you're passionate about or creating an accountability partner, make sure you're having an experience with that person so it's kind of a natural conversation starter around things that light your heart up. Strategy number two is commit to meaningful conversations. 
So you all know what it's like to have people just show up and start talking about the weather or asking about your job, right? And we have tons of boring acquaintances in the world to talk about this kind of stuff with on an everyday basis, right? But you want to commit to going deeper if you really want to build a, a loving and deep relationship. So talk about your passions. Talk about the questions you're dealing with in life or the, some of the challenges that you're facing in life. Share your personal history, maybe, or interesting stories about your life. And then, of course, ask about all of this from them, right? So here's a really simple example, right? If somebody says, hey, how are you doing today? You don't want to say, I'm fine. You want to say with, well, you know, I'm all lit up right now. I was just listening to a podcast about vegan living and how this person transitioned to a vegan lifestyle and here's what I'm thinking about doing, right? You want to share your passion. Or maybe you would say, hey, you know, I'm actually feeling a bit conflicted right now. I'm thinking about planning a trip and I'm wondering if I should go by myself or if I should invite other people and I'm, I'm kind of weighing the pros and cons of that. What do you think? Right? And so you see how these are really, really meaningful ways to have dialogue with people. And so when I tend to meet even new people for the first or second time, will be at, let's say we're sitting down for a, a chai date, a coffee date, you know, I'll just open up right away with, so tell me something that's exciting that's going on in your life right now. Or, you know, hey, this is a wild week that we're living through in the world. What's it like to be you in this week? Right? So I will be really heart-centered from the beginning so people never meet me and get into those weather-based conversations because from the get-go, I've shown them that I'm committed to really seeing them on a deeper level and to showing myself on a deeper level. All right, strategy number three for developing those really deep and meaningful relationships. Follow up. So if you're having a conversation with somebody and you hear something meaningful from them, follow up with them in the days to come. So let's say, for example, that someone shares that they're going through a hard time in their romantic relationship. Reach out to them a few days after you meet them or have that conversation and ask how it's going. Or let's say they tell you that there's a big presentation coming up at work. Reach out to them on the day of that presentation and see how it went. Ask them about the presentation or maybe give them a pep talk speech before they go in. Or maybe since, you know, the holidays are right here around us, uh, what if somebody asked you, you know, shared that they were conflicted about what to get their mom as a, as a holiday gift this year? You know, you can follow up with them and just say, hey, did you find a, a good gift for your mom? You know, I was thinking about it and you told me that you and your mom went on a trip like this or that your mom's this kind of person and here's a really great gift idea that I had. And so the golden rule that I have with developing new friendships is that I follow up at least twice on any given subject. Right, so I'll kind of note when I'm, when I'm connecting with someone in those early days of what seems to be lighting them up or what seems to be really a challenge for them right now. And I'll just make note of it. And sometimes I'll even put it literally inside of my planner just to say, follow up with them about this thing. Right, following up shows how much you care, shows that, that they really matter to you and that you're willing to kind of take the time and the thoughtfulness to show that you're interested in not just how they were in the moment you met them, but how they're doing going on in their life. And that's a really, really important foundation of friendship. All right, strategy number four, ask for help. Now, I know that this is gonna be the one that you might have the most blocks against and you wouldn't be alone. A lot of my clients have blocks against asking for help because they think that they're gonna somehow burden the other person. But the truth is that when you ask for help, it shows that you trust and value the other person and it gives them an opportunity to feel useful in the relationship, right? You love helping others, I'm guessing. Why? Because it makes you feel useful and good and of service and connected to that person on a deeper level. So when you ask for help, you're giving other people the same opportunity for them to feel useful. And believe it or not, this is why research has actually shown that people like us more after we ask them for help. 
Why? Because again, they feel trusted, they feel valuable, and people like people who make them feel good about themselves. So asking for help is a really, really awesome and big step in really building a profound and open and meaningful friendship. And so you can start in big ways or small, right? You can start, you can say, hey, I'm uh, moving next weekend and I'm having a little bit of a packing party. You know, would you come over for an hour and, you know, help me pack these dishes and I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll serve us lunch as a reward, you know? Or of course you could just ask for advice on something that you're going through or something that you think that the other person might be an expert on. Or maybe you need to kind of go and find a gift for someone you know or someone you love and you want some help choosing out a gift, a thoughtful gift. Or maybe you want your resume reviewed for a job that you're applying for. There's a lot of small and beautiful ways that you can ask for help. Um, so I really, really recommend you stepping into that vulnerability and asking for, for help so that you can deepen the relationship and it can really be a relationship that is based on service and care from the get-go. Okay, and our final strategy, number five, is give gifts. So giving gifts to your friends, even though they're new friends, it shows thoughtfulness. It shows that you're really interested in a longer term relationship, right? Like, would you give a gift to somebody that you might never see again or never want to talk to again? No, right? So you're really signaling to them that you care about your friendship and you care about the relationship and you have given time to think about something that they really might like to receive. So again, gifts can be pretty small. You can send them your grandmother's recipe for chocolate chip cookies if you know they love chocolate. You can send them a Spotify playlist for working out and uh, enjoying their workout a little bit more. Maybe something that really got you pumped for your workout. You can send them um, a list of recommendations of your favorite restaurants in a certain in a certain part of the city that you both live in, or even if you live in different cities, a certain recommendations you've heard about there, right? So there's so many creative ideas. Certainly, what you want to do when you're giving gifts is play to your strengths. So I have a friend who, you know, she doesn't make a lot of money. She can't afford to buy lots of gifts, but she sent me probably one of my favorite gifts ever recently that I received. She sent me this beautiful personalized um, image and she just said that she meditated for 15 minutes on the essence of me and she put that into a painting. And it was just so meaningful for me to receive that gift and it's a newer friendship and I, I now have so much desire to invest even more deeply in this relationship. And so again, whatever your strengths are, think about those and think about how you can use them to give a gift to this person in a special way that can really solidify your friendship and signal to them how much in fact you do care about them. So that is it. That is our fifth and final strategy. And you can see that if we put all of these strategies together, it really comes down to thoughtfulness and mindfulness and endurance, right? Commitment and consistency. So you want to have those meaningful conversations, follow up on those meaningful conversations, get gifts that are in alignment with those meaningful conversations, have experiences that are aligned to your shared interests and values, right? Open up in vulnerable ways, ask for help, give help. These are the heart-centered ways that we can create friendships that last lifetimes. And I can tell you honestly that as somebody who has lived in a different city every single year for over a decade and now pretty much every three years, I've really relied on these strategies to make wildly authentic, awesome, deep friendships. And even though I've left those cities, we are still in deep, deep relationship with one another as I continue to go forward and make new friendships in new places, no matter how old I get or what phase of life I enter. So put these things together. You deserve to have people around you who love you, who see you, who celebrate who you are, and who really, you know, enjoy your company and can help you become the person that you're becoming. So do not let yourself be lonely. Do not let yourself kind of 
step outside of one of the greatest sources of joy in our lives, which is our deep, deep, heart-centered relationships. And I wish you very well on this journey to building deep friendships. Know that it takes, you know, about 200 hours to really consider somebody a close friend. So give yourself that patience and flexibility on the journey. And let me know how it's going. Comment below if you have questions or suggestions for other people in this community about how to build these deep and meaningful relationships. And I really look forward for us to continue this conversation and continue building more meaning, more joy, and more fulfillment in our lives together. Have a great week and namaste. If this episode resonated with you and you want my help applying these ideas to your life in a practical way right now, then you're in luck. Because every week I set aside a few hours to talk exclusively to big-hearted high achievers who want my help figuring out how to create more joy, fulfillment, and inner peace while making a positive impact on the world. This is a one-hour call with me personally, and it's completely free for you. On this call, we will discuss your dreams and get clear on the values and impact that you want to create in the world. We'll identify the limiting beliefs that are keeping you stuck in negativity and how to create more joy and ease. We'll look at where you feel victimized and the mindset shifts that will help you reclaim your power. And we'll map out the interchanges you need to make to cultivate purpose, fulfillment, and deep, authentic connection in your life. After our call, if I'm confident that you are committed to doing the inner work to create more joy and fulfillment, I might even invite you into my exclusive community for big-hearted high achievers where we can take your transformation to the next level. So if you're seeking support, book your breakthrough call with me today by either opening up your camera on your phone and putting it in front of this QR code or just by going directly to caitlinmargaret.com slash apply.